<clears throat> All right, so I'm going to show how to replace the screen on this HP laptop model 15-CS3063CL. All right, so first thing we're going to do is remove these little rubber feet because there's most likely some hidden screws under there. So I'm just going to use my fingernails and peel these up. Here you can see there's one hidden screw there. All right, let's go ahead and do the same thing with this side. All right, peel that up. And here you can see there's two screws on this side. I don't know if there's hidden screws here because there's three screws along the bottom, but let's go ahead and peel these up just to check. No screw there. Okay. And sometimes to be mean, they'll put one screw on the other side. So let's double check this. Okay, no screw here either. All right, so the screws are only on the front and then under the back feet. All right, so let's go ahead and remove the screws using, <coughs> using a PH1 or JS1 screwdriver. The way I keep the screws in order is I put the flat side down in the pattern I remove them. So I'll put the one there and then we'll put these two in that pattern. All right, if this video helps you, make sure to like and subscribe so that others can find my videos and that way they'll also benefit from these repairs. All right, let's go ahead and remove the front screws as well. Oops, to remove the front screws, looks like we're going to have to switch to a PH0 or JAS0 screwdriver. All right, if these videos help you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing to the channel so that I can continue making these videos for a living. All right, I do these computer repairs for a living, actually. Um, these are customer computers. All right, so... As I make more and more of these videos, I actually get less and less customers because people learn how to fix these themselves, of course. Um, so hopefully you guys will help be able to help out so that I can continue doing these. All right, there we go. So we got all those screws out. Let's go ahead and remove the bottom cover. I'm gonna try with a suction cup first and see if that works. Otherwise, you might have to use a pry tool or my fingernails. All right, so usually I hold down the um, in-between here where the cover meets so that we can pull the cover off. All right, but here you can see, I don't think this is going to come out. All right, looks like these clips are very strong and it's not gonna come out with a suction cup. All right, so what we're going to do here, <clears throat> we're going to open up this computer. So this actually has a broken screen. I don't know if I can show this. Let's see, let's turn it on and we'll press the F9 key. Oh, actually, I think their thing is not even charged. Um, but anyways, we're going to replace the screen on here, okay? So what I'm going to do, all right, I can actually see the crack there. I don't know if you can see it in the video, but there's like a line going through there. All right, anyways, we're going to, I'm going to get my fingernails in the little um, crack here, and then I'm going to use my thumb here to push on the back, and let's see if we can pop the cover off that way. Okay, so just like this. It doesn't look like it wants to come out. Do we have to go from this side? I don't know, let's see. Maybe from the side here. Okay, let's see. It seems like the side is coming up a little bit more, so I might have to start from there. All right, I'm gonna open it this way so that I can rest it this way. And we're gonna go ahead and try and pop this cover out this way. All right, so here you can see we got part of it to come up. We're gonna continue going along the side here. Okay, just like this prying it out okay <clears throat> looks like these clips are super strong so we got part of it let's go ahead and start going down this side I'm gonna run my fingernail down this while I'm pulling this cover up just like this and here you can see it's popping all those covers we're gonna go over to this side same thing run my fingernail along the side as I kind of pull up on the cover and here you can see it's releasing so there we go. It's a little bit tough. This cover is holding in pretty strong. So I might have to switch to some stronger like metal pry tools here. Okay, so we got one side out. Let's see if we can get this side. Wow, these clips are super strong. They don't want to come out at all. Okay, well, we got this whole side out as you can see. All right. So we might have to just pull really hard. So I'm going to hold this side down and I'm going to pull on this cover a little bit harder. All right. There are some clips in the middle here. I can actually see where it's kind of flexing there. There we go. All right. So it looks like we just have to pull quite hard. Okay. There's also a clip over here. So I'm holding the 
inside or the other layer down while I'm pulling up. And there we go. All right, so we got the bottom cover off. These clips hold on really strong. All right, I'm gonna clean the dust off in here and on the fan. Uh, but as you can see here, got an M.2. This looks like, uh, let's see, is this PCIe? Yep, so there's a PCIe NVMe SSD. So I'm not going to show how to remove everything because the main thing here is I just need to replace the screen. Um, I am going to disconnect the battery. So let's go ahead and switch back to a PH1 or JS1 screwdriver. And we're going to remove the two screws here. All right, the battery model number. Let's actually zoom in so I can show this better. So here you can see battery model number HT03XL. Okay, so if you need to replace the battery, that's the model number you want. Go ahead and set these screws aside. <clears throat> Alright, you want to keep track of the screws. I wonder why there's no screw there, but they have a little arrow pointing to show that there should be one. Um, I guess that's just the battery itself. Alright, then we got two screws at the bottom here. We're going to remove both of those. Okay. And this battery also acts as the CMOS or BIOS battery. So once we replace the screen, you're going to see that when we turn it on, it's going to ask to um, to reset the BIOS. All right. So now that we got all the screws out, we're going to get underneath these little pieces and we're going to lift it. Actually, you can lift from here. All right. To disconnect the battery. It's super dusty and dirty. I'm just going to get this just this junk out. There we go. All right, so here we go. We also got the HP spare part number here, um, L11119-855. So that's kind of a weird spare part number. Usually they don't put letters like that. All right, so we'll set that aside. Uh, I'll at least pull out the RAM here. So the RAM, just pull these two tabs over to the side. All right, then the RAM pops up like that. Just grab it, and here you can see eight gigs pc4 2666v you can upgrade this to whatever amount of ram you want just make sure that it's pc4 2666v all right we got two slots here i got a customer at the door so yeah anyways the main goal of this was i'm gonna have to work on the screen so after removing the battery we're gonna open up this and we're going to press and hold the power button for 10 to 15 seconds. So you, this is very important when you're working with the screen. If you don't do this, there's a very good chance you can uh, fry some components on the board. And then your screen might never work, even if you get a new one. All right. So anyways, um, I'll be back. I'm going to go pick up the computer from my customer. And I'll clean out this dust. And I'll see you guys in a bit. All right. See you soon. All right. So we cleaned out the dust here. All right. So here you can see it's a lot cleaner. Okay, and then we already reset the battery. I'm going to point out the connectors in here, but I'm not going to remove them again. The customer just wants the screen repaired, so I don't want to mess around with things and risk damaging other things. So we got this one connector here that's going to the SD card slot. You got, again, the M.2 PCIe NVMe SSD. You got the keyboard backlight connector, keyboard connector. You got the trackpad connector here. Got the fan with the fan connector here. It looks like this fan you can remove after you remove these three screws. You can just pop it out. All right, you got this connector here, which is for the charge port or DC jack. It runs all the way along here up the speakers and then plugs up here. To remove this, you have to remove these screws for the hinge, and then you can pull the hinge up and you can pull this out. All right, you got the two USB ports here, as well as this little lock thing, which is a separate. This is just for lock. Um, like a physical lock to lock it to a table or something. All right, this USB board you can remove. There's three screws with this cable here. So if for some reason these USB ports stop working, you got that. <clears throat> All right, what else? Wireless card here with the two wireless antennas. Again, if you want to see how to remove these types of things, I got lots of videos showing those. So you can watch my other videos. Pretty much most computers are about 90% or so the same. So if you watch multiple different computers, you'll get the idea. All right, then you got um, the LCD LVDS connector here. This goes for the screen. Um, if you're messing with this connector, you want to make sure uh, remove the battery, press and hold the power button 10 to 15 seconds. That's very important. All right, then you got this connector here for this little speaker. All right, and you also got this other speaker on this side that runs underneath. I think it actually connects over here with the same one. All right. Um, I 
think that's pretty much it. Everything else on the side is soldered in. All right, so let's go ahead and begin the screen removal process. So now that we've removed the battery, press and held the power button, we're gonna open this thing up. Okay, on these, I think this model, they use some adhesive, it's really annoying, but we're gonna pull this up. I already took this out one time, so it's actually gonna come out easier than usual. Basically what we're doing is we're twisting this uh, bezel um, so that the inside part of the bezel goes up and then this side goes down. And that's how you kind of undo these clips and the latches and the adhesive. So the adhesive here a lot of times is pretty um, tough. So what I do just to make sure, you don't want to attempt this if your screen is working okay because there's a good chance you'll break it. But anyways, while you're pulling it up, you can get a thin tool in there and then kind of push the adhesive down while you're kind of working on it. All right. So it helps to use like, um, if you have like a thin plastic tool to do this, you can use like a credit card or something. But uh, yeah, all right, I make this look easy. I'm actually, this is going slow compared to how I would do this if I wasn't kind of showing how to do this. But anyways, we're gonna go along like that. Um, I might have to put the bottom cover on or actually, let me just get, uh, actually no, it's fine. My table won't have any static issues or anything. Um, if you're doing this on a table that can cause static or is conductive, you want to be very careful not to lay your computer down on it like this because then you can actually short something out and damage your computer. Again, pressing and holding the power button after removing the battery will help a lot with that, but it's not 100% guaranteed, so you want to still be careful. All right, so let's go ahead and remove the bezel. So let's get this into view. All right, let me zoom out a tiny bit more. So there we go. We're gonna go to the bottom and basically same thing. We can't really grab both sides here. Um, so we're basically gonna just pull this side forward, okay? And again, it helps um, to use a tool because they use this dumb adhesive to hold it down. So I'm gonna use this thin tool here and we're just gonna try and get between the screen and the bezel. And we're gonna work our way cutting that adhesive as we pull this bezel out, okay? So just like this. Okay, again, I already took this out before, so a lot of the adhesive is already not holding so strong. All right, but there we go. Okay, once you pop all of that out, let me go ahead and slide this back here. Okay, once you get all of that out, we should be able to remove the bezel. You might have to open or close the screen slightly to be about 90 degrees so that there's a bigger gap there. And then we're gonna kind of just wiggle this and pull this up, all right? So just like that, and there we go. So this little part here is a little tricky to get back in, so keep that in mind if you're doing this. Getting this piece back in is a little tricky, especially if you're doing it while the screen is still attached to the rest of the computer. All right, so anyways, we'll get this like that. Okay, so let's see. Yeah, I don't wanna have to take this whole thing apart because that's gonna be a kind of a pain. All right, so I already did this earlier. Um, there were, there's this kind of stretch adhesive. Um, so I already took that adhesive out. So this screen should be easy for me to lift out right now. But uh, in this little gap here, down here, and then also this gap down here, there's a little adhesive strip that will usually be in there. Um, the adhesive that was in here was like white, but for, um, for all I know, they can use whatever color adhesive they want. They have black ones, they have white ones. Um, but usually what you would do is you would get like some tweezers or something and you would just get in there and you would grab that adhesive and that's a um, stretch release adhesive. So let me see, I can show you an example. I have some here. All right, so basically the adhesive will be like this kind of stuff and as you stretch it, it's super stretchy. All right, as you stretch this adhesive, um, it releases from the screen. So basically what you want to do, you want to pull it as straight back as you can. The problem is because this is in the way. So when you pull it, the way I pull it is I pull this, it'll come up slightly at an angle. All right. So when I pull from here, then I push down here with my finger to kind of make that angle like flatten. So it kind of rolls it out that way. And you basically just, as you're pulling it, just keep pushing it down like this, keep tapping it. And as it goes flat, it will stretch. The other thing you can try is if you can um, get this about 90 degrees, if you can get it between this gap here, all right, then you can actually just pull the adhesive straight back from there. All right, so that's how you would do that. Anyways, let's go ahead and replace the screen now. 
So I already took the adhesive out again, so now we're just gonna let the screen flop forward here. All right, it looks like they might have held the cable there with an adhesive as well. That's gonna be somewhat annoying. Um, yeah, I'm gonna, let's use this tool and I'm gonna try and pull the screen cable out a little bit away from that adhesive. Okay, if you're doing this, you wanna be very careful because you don't want to damage this cable and then you're going to be screwed. All right, so anyways, let's see if we can somehow pull this forward. I'm going to use this little um, pick tool here and try and scrape it out a little bit. Why do they put adhesive on everything? What a dumb design. Okay, so we're just getting this adhesive out. There we go. That's about enough that we can flop this forward. All right, so we're gonna flop the screen forward like this. Here you can see the screen model number is NV156FHMT-T01V8. All right, so we got the replacement screen. Hopefully it matches, but here's the screen. I'm gonna open it up and let's see what we got. A lot of times they'll send like compatible models and not the actual exact model and sometimes things don't line up properly. So hopefully this screen they sent is okay. Let's see here. Okay, so here you can see they covered the model numbers. That means it's not an exact matching part. They like to do that a lot, all right? But here you can see everything seems to line up right. So we should be okay. Let's go ahead and um, peel off the tape here to get the replacement screen ready, okay. They really should put like fold like tabs into this so that you could easily peel this up because it's so annoying having to try and get this out. Let me, um, let's see, can I do it with this? Peel this up this way, there we go. Yeah, it, it's so annoying the way they put the tape. They should put some release tabs to make this easy to remove All right I kind of wonder if people are breaking their screens just trying to get them out of the packaging <laughs> okay so we got that let's go ahead and get the other side so I'm just gonna lift this up and peel that off okay lift that up and peel that tape away there we go all right, so now that we've got that, let's throw that aside. Again, let's make sure the screen looks the same. All right, it looks like everything lines up okay. Um, it's the same manufacturer screen, so hopefully everything will work okay. All right, let's go ahead and remove this. So to remove this, I use a thin um, scraping tool here, or this is a plastic razor blade. So we're gonna get underneath the tape here, and we're just gonna kind of scrape this up. Actually, let me switch to a better, newer blade. That one's an old one. Okay. Now let's go ahead and scrape underneath this adhesive tab. Okay, just like this. We're just gonna cut underneath this. Okay, just like that. Okay, now that we've got enough of it up, we can go ahead and get underneath here and we can peel this tab back. The adhesive is actually all sticking on the screen, so we're going to have to put new tape. All right, actually the end stayed here, so that's okay. All right, so now once we got this tape completely out, we're going to have to pull this tab back. I like to use the wings of it to pull it. So here you can see I'm using my fingernails at the wings of the connector, and then we just pull that back. So there we go. Now we're going to take this screen, and this is the junk one. We're going to toss that aside. Let's go ahead and get the replacement screen. Okay, we're going to get the replacement screen here. Get this all lined up. If you need, you might have to cut more of this or peel more of that adhesive out of the way. Um, it helps to kind of put the screen at an angle like this. So that way you can get the screen all lined up. All right. Get everything lined up and then I like to use my fingernails again at the wings to pull the connector in. You can use the tab to help pull it but it helps to pull the wings in like this. Okay 
and you want to make sure everything is lined up. It, I felt like it went a little crooked, so let me pull that back out. Okay. Sorry, I know it's hard to see this. Let me zoom in a bit more. But hopefully you guys can see what I'm doing. Okay, get the wing in. Come on. So the most difficult part is getting these little edges, the corners in. Okay. Once you get everything lined up, again, you can use this tab to help pull it in, but I find it works best to pull the corners, the edges in like this. There we go. I felt it click. That's good. Let's go ahead and pull this tab and tape that on. Again, this tape isn't holding too well, so I'm going to use some extra tape here to hold it into place. This is too big. Let me cut it a little bit smaller. All right, and then again, as usual, I hate how they make it all the way taped down. So what I do is I take the tape and I fold over a little piece of this. So that way I have a release tab. All right, so there we go. I'm gonna go ahead and tape this on top, just like this. And there we go. All right. All right, so now we're just gonna flip the screen back up here. Oops, let's zoom back out. All right, so we just flip the screen back into place. It has this protective thing on top, all right? So we're going to test the screen first before we completely peel that off. Okay, but let's go ahead and get this everything back in. All right, everything's good. All right, if you want, you can put some new double stick tape there. Um, usually I'll test it first, and then I'll put like some small pieces of double stick tape on the corners. You don't need the crazy long double stick tape that they put on these things. All right, so I'm going to close this right now. For now, let's go ahead and put the battery back in. So just line this up. Okay, there's the little raised notches to help you guide it into place and then push the thing down right there. All right, let's go ahead and put back these screws. Okay, let's see here. Do I got all the right screws. Yep. So put this screw here. Oops, let's zoom in. Let's screw here. Okay, then we got the two screws there. Let's go ahead and get that. Alright, and the last screw on this corner here. Alright, let's go ahead and plug this in and test and make sure that the screen is working. So I'm going to slowly, carefully open this back up. All right, I plugged in the charger over here. So let's go ahead and plug this in and see if we can power this up and the screen works with all this dust here. Okay, so we're going to power this up. All right, power light is on. So again, we removed the battery and then press and held the power button. So that reset the BIOS or CMOS thing. So I don't know if you can see right now, the power button light is on, but the screen is off. So sometimes it's gonna take a while. So let's give it a bit and there you go. So here you can see, oops, let me flip this over. So here you can see it's giving a message about the BIOS or CMOS was reset. So it says just press enter to reboot the system. But the screen looks good, so we should be good to go. Again, I'm going to put a little double stick adhesive on the corners, um, but yeah. All right, let's make sure the computer boots up completely. I'm going to block this side just in case the username shows up, but here you can see the HP. Oh, it's restarting itself. Let's give it a little more time. What's going on? The screen's just blinking on and off over and over. Oh, it's starting up. Okay. At least I think, what is going on? Huh, it doesn't like this screen? So the computer's acting like it's on, and I see the hard drive light blinking like it's working just fine. Um, but the screen is just flickering, flickering, so... I don't know what's going on with that. I'm gonna have to try with an external monitor and see what's going on, because... Looks like something might be wrong with this. Hmm. That's very strange. I'm gonna maybe reset the BIOS. 
So the computer is acting like it's on. Let me see if I adjust like brightness and things, but this isn't a brightness setting because usually you can still see the screen. Let's see, where's the brightness setting button here? Yeah, nothing happens. Caps lock light works, all right. So I don't know what's going on. The screen flickering thing stopped. The hard drive light is flashing. It's flashing as if it's reading. So um, again, I'm gonna plug this in an external monitor real quick just to see if it's actually working or not. And I'll be back. All right, see you guys in a bit. All right, so I was able to see the screen with the external monitor. So I told it to restart. We'll see what happens. I don't know if it's actually restarting. I hope it is. As you can see, the screen is still just flickering like this. So I don't know what is going on. But uh, we're going to let this keep going. I'm going to check if it's actually restarting. Sometimes restarting the computer will make the replacement screen work. So we'll give this a bit and we'll see what happens. All right, I'm going to plug the external again and watch it and see if it's actually restarting. The hard drive light is, oh, there we go. So it restarted. Here you go. I don't know why it's working on the boot screen, but once it loads, I'm going to move this out of the way just in case it shows their accounts. Um, the screen is just completely black right now. Oh, okay, it's working now. So you can see it's starting up, it shows the background. Yeah, so I don't know why sometimes you have to restart the computer for it to work. So they have several user accounts here, so I'm gonna block that out. But here you can see it's working and it's asking the pin and everything. So I'm gonna check, make sure. Hmm, the touch screen doesn't seem to work function though. So I don't know if Okay, I'm gonna try and peel this thing off here and see if this is affecting the touchscreen or maybe it's not touchscreen, I don't know. Or maybe they disabled the touchscreen feature. So let's go ahead and peel this up. And yeah, touchscreen doesn't work at all. So whatever, we're gonna shut it down. Or actually, let me restart one more time. Put this back on temporarily. Okay, just wanna make sure everything's working okay. Restart, restart, it's restarting. Come on. It takes a while for this computer to restart. With an SSD and everything, that's kind of slow. But there we go. All right, I'm going to hold this out of view again because it's going to show all their accounts. They have like so many accounts on this computer. Uh, right now it's loading the HP. I, I can put it diagonal like this so you can kind of see when it comes up. Come on. All right, so there we go. You can see it's on. Yeah, there's. I think they either they disabled the touch screen or there is no touch screen. I don't know if this screen is touch screen or not. But anyways, let's go ahead and shut down this computer. Okay, and then we're going to add some double stick tape. I'll show you what I, how I do it, All right? We're gonna let this computer turn off completely. There we go, it's off. I'm gonna leave this plugged in because their battery is super low, so let's make sure it charges. Okay, so now what we're gonna do, we're gonna get some double stick adhesive here. I just have some double stick acrylic tape, and I'm just gonna cut some small squares, all right? So let's actually put the screen up this way. And what I'm going to do, I'm gonna let the screen fall forward. Okay, just like this. I'm gonna add a small square here and a small square there, all right? Again, we don't need any crazy double stick adhesive like they put. We're just gonna put a small amount so that the screen doesn't move around. Okay, even a small square here will hold pretty strong. So I'm just gonna put a little bit like this on the corner here. If for some reason we need to take it out, it's gonna be actually pretty tough to lift this back out. I'll just put a small corner here and here. All right, and then we're gonna get another, I'm gonna cut another square on both sides. 
okay. And we're just gonna stick it in the corner down here. So we'll get one in this corner there and another in this corner here. All right, so now that we got those, we're just gonna peel off those little protective sticky things. And then we have to be careful when putting the screen back that we get it in the right position the first time. Okay, so let's go ahead and peel these off. And this adhesive is really sticky. So if we have to move it around, there's a good chance we're gonna end up tearing that screen out. Okay, so let's get that in. I'm gonna unplug it for now. All right, so I'm gonna tilt this on its back right now, just like this. Then what we're gonna do, we're gonna let the screen slowly fall. I'm gonna pull it towards me and then make sure to get this corner in first. And there we go, just like that. And then we're gonna get this corner in and then there we go, drop that down. You can lightly press on it, you don't need to push hard. Let's peel this piece off as well. You wanna roll it back, don't pull it straight up because you don't wanna to put too much stress on the screen. Okay, so just like this. If you want, you can stick this to the old screen. Okay, so screen should be held in place now. All right, so next thing we're gonna do is get this the bezel or the frame and we're gonna stick this back in. Again, this part you have to kind of get underneath. It can be a little bit tricky. Okay, kind of put it at an angle like this when you get it in and then try and slide that in. There we go, all right. Get that all slid in properly. Then click that down. We're gonna have to check this because a lot of times these don't go in right. So you wanna check back here. So here you can see, um, let me see if I can zoom in to show this better. So here you can see where the um, bezel comes through if you open it a certain way, all right? So here you can see the bezel is trying to go underneath here, but for some reason this side doesn't wanna go. So kinda of have to move it around. It helps again to have this open about 90 degrees. Okay, and you kind of have to work on it. Oops, sorry, I know it's hard to show this. It's hard to see, but I'm gonna kind of have to work this, wiggle it around and try and get this into place. Oops. Yeah, I don't know how I'm gonna show this on camera, but so we got this side in over here so here you can see how it's flush we're gonna have to work our way to get the whole thing over there but uh it's getting caught so let's go ahead and pull this back up make sure everything is in i think what's happening is i didn't push down the adhesive there too well so let me get something to push that down let's use the little plastic tool here and i'm going to go in from here to push the screen cable back down all the way Okay, go, let's get the bezel back in. I know this is hard to see and hard to show, but hopefully you guys get the idea. Um, come on. This is the hardest part to do. I might end up having to pull the whole screen out if I can't get this to go in right. But uh, we'll see. All right, let me tilt it up this way and see if we can get it to go down properly this way. If my head gets in the way, I'm sorry, but I'm trying to see what I'm working on here. Let's see, so I don't think opening it this way helps. I think that makes it worse. Yeah, that makes it, uh, maybe, okay. So I don't know if you can tell, but this side, the right side likes to go in a lot easier. I don't know why the left side is being a pain. So this side is perfectly fine. This side, okay, there, it's all lined up. 
All right, let's go ahead and click this stuff into place. Oops, I'm going out of view of the camera, but let's go ahead and click this all into place. So I'm just pushing at the top. So basically it's allowing the back to cut or the inside parts to go up like before. Okay, oops, let's zoom out a bit more. Again, this is gonna be somewhat of a pain, let's see. Okay, it looks like this lip all went in properly, so we're good as far as that goes. So now let's go ahead and turn this around and let's clip everything else back in. So we're gonna run across here, click those in. Looks like it clipped in, so it looks like we're good to go. All right, so let's go ahead and close this up. Check, make sure that all these clips look good. All right, everything looks good in there. All right, let's go ahead and reassemble it. So let's put the bottom cover back on, all right? I'm gonna plug this cable back in and just leave it plugged in so it can charge a little bit more. Okay, let's go ahead and get this cover. Um, I don't think there's any special way we have to put this back on. I think we can just get it lined up and push everything back down. Okay. And go all the way around, just clipping everything back into place. Okay, there we go. There's also clips in the middle, so make sure that you push around the center as well. There we go. All right, everything's clipped in. Let's go ahead and put back the screws. So again, PH1 or JS1 screws here. And then the PH0 or JS0 screws along the front. And that's pretty much it. Hopefully this video helped you guys. Again, if it did, make sure to like and subscribe so that others can watch and learn from these videos. Um, I don't know if other people will probably have the same issue where they put the screen and then it's going to have some issues not turning on. So hopefully they watch those videos to see how to fix that issue. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and put this back in now. All right, and the other rubber piece. All right, and let's switch to the PH0 or JS0 screwdriver and put back the last few. All right, and that's pretty much it. You're welcome to stay while I put back the last three screws. Um, thanks for watching. All right. Alright, that's it. See y'all later. Let's drop this. Bye.